variable primary. What's a variable primary system look like? Well, here's a good example. Uh, a couple of boilers, a couple of variable speed pumps, air separator, expansion tank, and some coils. And people started designing systems this way so that the boilers always saw the lowest return water temperature. Um, this arrangement can also save you some pump energy because your variable flow from one end of the system to the other. There aren't any constant flow, constant speed pumps here. All right, so we're going to pipe up this variable primary system. Do you see anything missing here? Well, one thing that's missing is isolation valves. These are a must. Isolation valves help reduce pump energy and stack losses, and they're also required for ASHRAE 90.1 2010. Uh, what does your state stand for ASHRAE 90.1? Well, you can look up it online. This map here is uh, as of July uh, 2016. But you can see where your state is in terms of the energy code, and ASHRAE 90.1 2010 addresses pump, stack, pump flow, and boiler stack losses. And here's specifically what it says. When a boiler plant includes more than one boiler, provisions shall be made so that flow in the boiler plant can be automatically reduced correspondingly when a boiler is shut down. And that's due to stack losses and pump energy. If you're not going to use the boiler, why would you pump water through it? All right. Now that we know we need isolation valves, is there anything else we might want to put in this system to keep us out of trouble or for proper operation? Well, look what we have here. We have two pumps down here at the bottom, and they're in parallel. Is there any chance that those two pumps could come on together and run through one boiler? And the answer is yes, we've seen it, because the pumps are controlled by the building management system or the variable speed pump controller. They're not controlled by the boilers. There's also VFDs there. Do those VFDs have bypasses? Do they have manual mode? Is an operator going to come down to the central plant where these pumps are and say, you know what, we don't have enough flow rate out in the loop. I need to turn both pumps on. There's a chance you can overflow these boilers. And with too much velocity, you can erode the tubes and ruin equipment. So for a little bit of money, you can put an automatic flow limiter in there. We highly recommend them. We don't believe they should be an option. Make sure if you're going to do variable primary that you use flow limiters. Every boiler has a maximum flow rate and you have pumps in parallel, you can always end up having trouble. So we've added our isolation valves and our automatic flow limiters. How are we going to stage these boilers in variable primary? Remember we talked about all the staging um, in constant flow primary, variable flow secondary. Well, how do we stage in variable primary? It's different. The system is a little bit more complicated. Let's look at this system here. 2 million BTU load, 100 GPM through one pump, and we have 120 degree return water temperature and 160 degree supply water temperature. I need to turn on my second boiler. How do I get it turned on? Who's responsible for making this system work? Is it the boiler manufacturer? Is he responsible for staging the second boiler on? Are you using the built-in boiler controls? Or are the boilers controlled by the BMS? Now, those boilers are going to need to have flow rate established before they fire, or their safety will take them offline. How are we going to establish flow through boiler number two? Well, first thing we're going to need to do is open that isolation valve. What kind of isolation valve did you specify? Is it a butterfly valve? A globe valve? Does it open fast? Does it open slow? Or did you specify anything at all? What kind of equipment are you going to do in your project if you didn't specify what you wanted? Here's what we know. If we instantly open boiler number two isolation valve to establish flow, we're going to cut the flow rate of boiler number one in half. Now keep in mind it was fully loaded when you stroke the valve open. And now, because boiler number one was running at 100% and we opened the valve on boiler number two, the flow rate through boiler number one is now going to be cut in half, which means instead of a 40 degree delta T, we're operating around an 80 degree delta T, 120 degrees in and 200 degrees out. That's not good operating practice. We might trip the high limit of the boiler. It might be an automatic high limit. You very well might trip the manual reset high limit. If you don't trip the manual reset high limit, the boiler is going to cut off on its own internal limit and it's going to short cycle. That's not good operating practice. If it trips its high limit, manual reset high limit, someone's going to have to drive down to the job site and mash that reset button 
Meanwhile, your owner is going to have a boiler that's inoperable, which means there's going to be comfort issues. So, what happens to boiler number one discharge temperature if you stroke that valve open? It's going to, it very well might go beyond the limits of the boiler and you may have some problems. The thing to do is to take B2 isolation valve and open it slowly. Talk to your boiler manufacturer. Ask the rep, what kind of time frame do I need to start and stop at the opening of this valve? And what do I need to do with boiler number one? Maybe your best answer is to take boiler number one and slowly modulate it down as you open the isolation valve of boiler number two. But you need to write that sequence. Now some boiler manufacturers can control both of these items the boiler firing rate, and the isolation valves. If that's what you want, you just need to ask for it. It's standard on some boilers, it's optional on others. But it's widely available boiler isolation valve packages and staging software. For some boilers, like Lock and Bar, it's built in and it's standard. If you want it, just specify it. Or you need your building management to understand that they need to bring the lead boiler down in its firing rate and slowly stroke boiler isolation valve number two, and that the stroking of boiler isolation valve number two, the rate of change should not exceed the rate of change capable of the boiler. You want the boiler to be able to slow down faster than the isolation valve is opening up. Remember, there's no need to turn on that second pump when staging on boiler number two. If the pumps are in parallel as shown, then we can have one pump running across both boilers. Keep in mind, the pumps aren't staged by the boilers. They're staged on the differential pressure sensor out in the system. And that may be by the built-in BFD controls or by the BMS. But pump staging in variable primary is not based on what the boiler's doing. It's based on what's happening out in the system determined by flow. So those are independent of each other. So what are some advantages of variable primary? Well, Remember, we do eliminate that return water temperature mixing that happens in constant flow primary, variable flow secondary. And we also get that pump energy savings, right? Because we are variable flow from one end of the loop to the other. Now, some disadvantages though are, well, we actually eat up a little pump energy when we add those flow limiters because they have a pressure required to make them work, two to five PSI to begin working, depending on the brand. So that may eliminate some of that pump energy savings that you picked up going to variable primary to begin with. We also have to make sure that the boiler stays in their allowable flow limits. And that can be a little bit tricky. In this particular instance, in this particular design, there's also always going to be flow through a boiler. Remember the pump energy and stack losses? It's wasteful to pump water through a boiler if it's not firing. But in this particular instance, in a lot of the designs we see, you always have to have one of those isolation valves open so you're not deadheading the pumps. If boiler number one and boiler number two are satisfied on temperature, we can't shut both isolation valves because then we would deadhead the pumps and have problems. So one of those would have to be programmed to, to be opened at all times. Make sure you specify that or that you design a bypass system around the boiler. The other disadvantage of this variable primary system is that complex boiler staging we talked about. Who's in charge? Who is going to stroke the isolation valve? And who's going to determine what the boiler firing rate needs to be? 